seems to give us infinite energy, infinite time. A program that produces its own source code as output. I don't trust Anna. You take the arc of the block and trust him. It's like the radio show, The Pope is telling you as it is. So this could potentially be millions of years of loops all mm. compounded on top of one another. Because yeah, you've reduced the breakdown voltage because you've replaced yeah. the neutral air with this ionized plasma, mm. which just gives an easy path for electrons to flow. Today, we're watching uh, an independent movie that was on Netflix from eight years ago called ARC. What did you think? ARC, A-R-Q, is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's I give it a 9 out of 10 just because it's hard for me to give a 10 out of 10 to anything. However, it's one of the few movies that I've recommended to many people. And I've actually I've actually like forced them to sit down and watch it with me five separate occasions. Um, it's very good science fiction and and it's low budget. Now, now low budget sounds like it's like an insult, but like, no, no, no. They get a lot of science fiction done without having to do lots of money, lots of, without having to do lots of special effects. Really, they start with a kernel of an idea, a, a scientific kernel. And the idea is that time is looping and then from there falls out the consequences falls out the the, the naturally arising drama it's, it's not forced it's it's given this this situation given this scenario what are the things that we're going to encounter and so you don't need a lot of money to do that you need to captivate people's eyes might keep it cap, captivate people's minds and so i think this movie does that very well and additionally there's like this arch rp rpg fantasy aspect you know what i'm talking about it's like like every time you go in behind a door in a new, door, new room you go behind the door to check to see if there's something there or right, like if you if you die to the boss in one way you you go back to do the fight again and you do slightly different and this is this is a groundhog day format and and it satisfies that rpg fantasy itch now one thing that's really cool about this this movie is that there are plot holes, which which sounds bad, but actually the more you watch the movie, the more they get filled in. It's actually, it's very cool, very unusual. Um, there are cons, however, to this movie. It's and I don't understand the edge of the time bubble at the towards the very end of the movie. We'll talk about it. And, and also, there's one decision that the main character makes that I really I don't think is right. But we'll see. What did you think about this movie? I also really like this movie. I gave it an 8 out of 10. I don't think it's a perfect movie, but for an independent sci-fi movie and a single set, it's it's I really, really enjoy it. Um, I think the casting and the acting is really good considering they're only working with a single house. Uh, like you, I feel like there's bigger events happening than just what's occurring inside the house. Um, I think it's an interesting use of the Groundhog's Day of premise, Groundhog Day premise, and I think you're right. Like, you feel this, like, what what could you do next time? Could he yeah. could he go over there instead of over here? And it is like fighting a boss in in a game where you sort of plan out your next move, but in real life. Um, and I did find the building the world outside of the house very compelling, and they did it with dialogue. It's just straight dialogue. What people say, they're talking about the block. They're talking about Taurus. They're talking about different things going on outside the house. And it's all contained within the house. But I feel like there's a larger world out there. I find that very compelling. Um, I also did like that Renton and Hannah have some serious character flaws, which we will, which we will talk about. Um, they didn't just make these people uh, straight up good people. There's They have... The characters have to deal with this world that is falling apart with these competing factions and they have to live within it and find their way, which means their character flaws are going to show. Um, so overall, I give it an 8 out of 10. Great independent, low budget science fiction movie. Highly recommend it. I recommend it. I still recommend it. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Okay, so this is the opening scene of the film and we're clued in very quickly. We're very quickly, we're clued in to... What time of day is it? Six sixteen a.m. And also that this is his alarm clock, so it's like future, but not super future. Like he still has a wood desk. It's not like some fancy like hologram desk, right? But cool, cool clock. It also yeah. clues you into where were we set. Yeah, I picked up future. on. I picked up on this like the wall is dilapidated. There's like some maybe some imperfections that's telling you dystopian, but then some sort of high tech clock is telling you near future. Mm -hmm. It's great use of of the house. Mm -hmm. And so then we see Renton's bedroom, and mm -hmm. and it's a little bit not that well maintained. His his windows are dirty. He's got that IKEA lamp. So I guess IKEA is still in business. 
Um, and then the bed sheet, no bed sheet. That that makes me that makes me so angry. Uh, but but uh, I guess I mean it's his room. Do whatever you want. The the darkened windows isn't that on purpose because he's trying to. Oh. Uh, I guess he doesn't want the air to come in from the outside because it's somehow slightly toxic, and also I guess people can't look into his house if he darkens See, the windows i misunderstood what these were i always thought it was like nighttime outside but it's clearly daytime, <laughs> daytime. <laughs> and he's like painted the windows uh mm -hmm. black and so it's not dirty windows it's just in incomplete incompletely spray painted yeah incomplete oh yeah that's yeah i wonder if if he completely blacked it out it would look too perfect so he kind of splotches it mm -hmm. so it looks dilapidated like every right. other house on the block if you're trying to hide out in a place and look un, looks, you want the place to look like it's not maintained. But if things are perfectly black, it's like that's maintained. That's maintained, yeah. But it does bother me that there's no sheet on the mattress, right? Because right. if it's if you're in a dystopian future, product you know finished manufactured items are hard to come by. Then a mattress is going to be hard to come by. In which case, you want it to stay clean. In which case, you need to use sheets of some kind. So. If the sheets get nasty, you can either wash them if you have, them. if you can, or yeah. throw them away. But the mattress yep. stays pristine because this is precious. precious, so precious. Yeah, yeah, precious, yeah. Precious. precious. The mattress. <laughs> so this is Renton, the main character, and he's, I guess, hovering over Hannah, his former ex-girlfriend, former girlfriend, mm -hmm. and nothing, nothing here except the character introduction. Can we look at the next picture? Yeah. So then he's like caressing her. She's still sleepy. He sees on her shoulder mm -hmm. this this dot structure. Um, yep. I don't think we ever find out what it is. My my guess was that it was a medical device, something reporting I, on whatever her physiological state is. Oh uh, yeah, and I was also thinking maybe it could be some kind of like dermal ID tag. Yeah, that, that also makes used. sense because. Because she was, prior to coming back to Renton, she was captured by Taurus, the evil corporation. So maybe yeah. this is their, their tag on her to like, where did our prisoner go? Right? Yeah. So so in this first opening scene, there's just so many cool things of like, we're just in a room, but mm -hmm. we get these, these small indicators of what the situation is outside, right. what the situation is between them, what the situation is technologically, what time... Like what? What year is it? Probably twenty thirty, maybe something like that. Yeah, so, close future, not too far away. Okay. Yeah, maybe fifties. I don't know, something like that. But they've got these like dermal light medical somethings in their yeah. skin. Yeah. So we don't have it, but we in our world we can imagine it being close by in time. I think it's not that far away. Yeah. Yeah. So so many cool things in just the opening scene. Fantastic storytelling. Okay, and so then this is. Oh gosh, one of the, this is maybe, no, not Cuz, Cuz, this is one of the bad guys. And he says, give yep. me your apples. And so this gives us another clue about what's going on in the world. Let's eat first. We shouldn't linger. We haven't eaten in two days. He's got apples. Nobody has apples anymore. He does. So on, on one level, it's like just apples, like who cares, right? But the fact that nobody else has apples gives us a time scale on how long has it been since society's broken down like if it's been 20 years then like yeah no apples and f no way would rent and have apples either and if it was like a month after society's broken down then like people still have apples so so i don't know what the actual number would be like how many months or maybe years i don't know how apples how long apples would last in like a in a silo um but it does it gives you a, it gives you a limit so i'd guess less than a year about I I was thinking it was less about, I was thinking it was more about distribution. I was picturing like there's rich people in Taurus who like live in high rises or cities or something and they have access to this, to apples and meat and all these different things. But the distribution has failed so that it's hard to get the apples out to regular people. So for regular people, it's they don't see their apples very often, if at all. I, see. I interpret it as an inequality thing. That's that's a good point because the farm because people still need to eat, so so the farms may be operating but underneath the control of the corporation Taurus, whereas these people mm -hmm. are on the block side, so like the the counter corporation people, and they may yeah. not have access to apples. Right, but then uh, it also tells us that um, Renton has access to apples, which is like, wait, what? If everybody's like, what? Where? Why? Why is no there's no apples? 
But then Renton's like, I got apples, which yeah. tells us he has some secret up his sleeve. Um, that or he was a, like a prepper. <laughs> He's a prepper he had apple stores. <laughs> but yeah. they weren't preserved apples. There, it's like, it's like fresh apple they're going to cut up. I, I guess now that I'm thinking about it, isn't it a statement that he is has the ability to grow apples because he has access to the ark? So, oh, I don't think he was growing them. I think he just had them. Like I don't think he has an apple tree. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's because he worked for Taurus for a while, working on his project. Yeah. Maybe that's a holdover from before he uh, ran away. That's possible too. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't think about that. Hmm. Okay. But either way, the apples is telling us so much. Yeah. Like what you know, what does it mean about the world? How did he get the apples? It's just still offhand comment, but just pretty cool. Yeah, offhand comment, little comment about apples, but they tells you a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Good storytelling. Okay, so the premise of this movie is Groundhog's Day. And my question is, how would you how would you ever tell someone that you're in the Groundhog Day loop? Like how can you convince someone of that? Yeah. Listen to me, okay? Right now, this very moment, it's happened before. Twice, I think. What are you talking about? Shit. Tell me you remember. When you have to remember. Have you lost your fucking mind? <laughs> I mean, her okay, reaction so is correct. <laughs> like, like, yeah. If somebody walks up to you and you're like, we've been here before, they're like shaking you. They're like, we've been here before. Mm -hmm. And you're like, like deja vu happens. Is that what you're talking about? Like, no, we've been here before. This is happening again. And you're like, this is crazy. So what would you do? What would you do? How could you convince someone that you're in a Groundhog Day loop? So my first thought goes to, it depends on how many loops you've been in. If you've been in like a hundred loops and you know the events that are coming up, like for sure. If you showed a string of predictions where it's like, I know this is going to happen. That person's going to open that door. That person's going to say this. And you did it like 20 times in a row. I don't know if the person would be convinced, but would the person you're trying to convince that you're in a time loop would be like, what is going on here? This is very strange. So I would say prediction, 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 prediction that comes true because you've been in the loop so many times. Hopefully that would be supporting evidence that you've been in the loop. Well, what would so, you do? So before I do that, more, I can clarify, mm -hmm. the more specific the predictions are mm -hmm. and the more out of regular routine the predictions are, yep. like the more believable that it is that this person has, has a prior knowledge right right so you want specificity and out of the ordinary as if much you're as like, possible if you're like you're gonna get a coffee today like i get a coffee every day like that's not a prediction right? <laughs> he's gonna drive to work like that's not that's not gonna work that's right so i guess what i would do is orchestrate a very complicated difficult to predict scenario <clears throat> but that if you if you were to like look into it i totally orchestrated um but yeah <laughs> that would convince that would convince you right <laughs> yeah and, but that's, that is dependent on there being many time loops so you can build up the memory of what's going on. If you've only been in like one or two time loops, your memory isn't going to be so good that you can predict, predict. You can mm -hmm. tell the person what's going to happen. So I think you got to wait in that case. I don't think you can, right? Okay, but in this case, Renton tells Hannah what the faces look like of her, her, her confederates, and that's information that he should not know yet. And I think that was compelling. Yeah, but that still falls under the, what is it? Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. It's true. And there are, there is it, there are explanations in the real world that would right. explain how he knows that because he's really smart. So he right. could look, he could have anticipated this move by Hannah. Right. Which is more plausible than time loop. Right. Yeah, yeah. So they think he may still be working for Taurus. And so if Taurus, if he's working for Taurus, Taurus could have given him profiles on what these people look like, in which case... That's a more reasonable explanation, right? Like a more grounded in earth. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's a difficult problem. Difficult problem. So he does try with explaining what they look like, but I think she is correctly not convinced, but then lashes out and calls him crazy. But I have an alternative answer. Okay. You get together with your friends and you come up with okay. a plan. You say, if we say this sequence of words, that means we're a time loop and everyone, everyone like commits and <laughs> believes it. <laughs> right right okay that's in a world where time loop is plausible i mean we're talking about it right <laughs> that's, true. <laughs> that's true i just have no idea how that might happen i guess that's also like the let's have a time party and you're like the time party begins in 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 
You don't even have to plan it because if you have time travel, oh yeah, like, okay. oh, <laughs> it I just can't. happens. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It happens. People Future show me up will take time. care of it. Yeah. yeah. In fact, the less planning I do for the time party, the more compelling it is because the planning can be done in the future to get us back to the time party. <laughs> that's true. The title of the movie is ARQ, which stands for Arcing Recursive Quine. Can we figure out what that means? What is it? The Ark. The Ark. Arcing Recursive Quine. It's what they're after. Uh, this is what you stole from Taurus? I didn't steal it. I built it. What's it do? It's a hyper-efficient energy turbine. A generator. That's it? Okay. First off, Hannah is like, we're in an energy crisis. The world is scarcity. Look at you with this generator, loser. Like, come on. This is a big that's, deal. That's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Also, if 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 he he was working at like a Ford factory and like they mil, they build up Ford Bronco, does he get to take it home? Like, no, it's still company property, right? That's right. In fact, when you sign contracts with corporations, I think you sign away. Depending on the contract, you sign away the device that you make and all the patents, and you maybe get a percentage. That's yeah. what incentivizes you. But they own it right. because they paid you and they did the investment. So I think it. I think it's just it is stealing. Like you can't, because <laughs> otherwise, why would the corporation sink money into your project if they didn't own it? They're like, you get to take it now. Like take what? it away. <laughs> glad <laughs> glad we did that for you. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Why would they do that? Yeah. Okay, but but he he like he built it from like from scratch. Got all the parts. Like, okay, yeah. let, let's let me forward. Yeah. But, so the question is, if we the name of, is arcing, recursive, quine, and somehow this is creating energy mm -hmm. so can we figure out what this means so arcing to me to the me, thing that comes to mind is as like an electric spark that's what i thought as well okay so something to do with electric sparks okay uh recursive is like a recursive formula like a math right. formula where the answer from the the previous equation gets plugged into the next one mm -hmm. um so that some kind of like feeds back on itself yeah. And then quine. I don't know what quine means. So let's look that up. I have up. no idea what quine Quine's means. Quine's definition. Quine. Let's look at wiki, wiki, wiktionary. Wiki Never knew how to pronounce that. Okay, here we go. Uh, noun. A program. Let's get a little zoom here. That's. I clicked on it. Okay, so a program that produces its own source code as output. Okay. Oh. Okay, so not only is it recursive, but the output from the previous step is code that is used in the next step. Ah, so, so, so it's a little bit more than just recursion, where recursion, like you have an equation that you plug the answer back into itself. It's mm -hmm. also the answer back into itself with instructions. Is that the difference? Yeah, I think so. So it, it's, it's a recursive. So the input from the first step from the previous step is code it does this it does something and then it outputs code and then that goes in back into the instruction set hmm. so it's a really complicated recursive feedback, feedback on itself twice over type thing yeah but not so, but not just power like you could have a a PID where like the power of the output goes back into itself it's also mm -hmm. informational goes back on itself Right. So somehow this must be, I'm going to say this is related to the energy part. Okay. So something to do with electricity, energy, maybe, and some arcing is important. The recursive tells us it loops back on itself. And quine is telling us the, inst the uh, instructions are part of the recursive Feedback. input output. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And somehow those three things together create the arc, which is, uh, sounds like an extremely complex generator. Sure. That turns into a time machine. I mean, look at look at the equations back here. Looking complicated. Complicated. Super smart. Renton says that the arc is rigged with 20,000 volts. Let's see what he does. Okay. Don't, don't touch it. It's rigged with 20,000 volts. What is it? The arc. The arc. Arcing recursive quantum. That's what they're after. <laughs> Okay, first of all, he says, don't, don't touch it. So is he telling her to touch it? 
okay maybe i don't know maybe he, that's fine <laughs> <laughs> okay. and then he does this thing where he like he taps his screwdriver yep. against the arc and then pulls it away and he gets yep. this electrical arc of this yep. length and so my question yep. was or is 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 that a reasonable arc length for twenty thousand volts okay so let's do a calculation okay so the question is is it a reasonable arc length for twenty thousand volts so First question is, what's the length of the arc? And yeah, I got two fists. And the way I did this, actually, I put a picture on the left. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. So I drew an arrow, the first arrow, the right arrow, from the tip of the screwdriver to where the electric arc is touching the machine. Yep. And then, and I drew a little midway mark there. I, I, I drew it. Yeah. No, I did. It. Okay. When I translated those arrows to the left, it actually ended up being about the size of his fist. And so okay. given where it is on his fist, that's like the thumb side of the wrist to the okay. pinky knuckle. Okay. And so to be clear, not from the pinky side to the knuck, the index side, because that's a longer length. Okay. And then I got, I got a measuring tape, a measuring tape, and I measured from the wrist thumb side to the pinky. Yep. And for me, I got about 10 centimeters. So this, this first uh, segment is 10 centimeters. And then two of them is about 20 centimeters. 20 centimeters. Okay. So if we come back here, then the two times fists estimate length of the arc is about 20 centimeters. That makes sense to me. Yep. So that would mean the next thing we have to know is the breakdown voltage of air. That's right. Because the air is no longer functioning as a resistor. The atoms have broken down. I guess the molecules, the molecules have broken down. You strip away the electrons, you strip away the, from the, the ions and you get the electric arc. So in air, that is... 30,000 volts, oh, sorry, 30, yeah, 30,000 volts per centimeter or 30 kilovolts per centimeter, however you want to think yeah. of it. Okay, which means if we have an arc of 20 centimeters and we need this much voltage per centimeter, multiply those two numbers together, we get 600 kilovolts. So this arc from Renton's screwdriver to the machine should have been 600,000 kilovolts, much more than the 20 kilovolts um, mm -hmm. that he quoted. In fact, 20 kilovolts would be less than a centimeter, so a real, real mm -hmm. tiny arc. Real tiny, yeah. However, he, this isn't a spark that he doesn't hold the screwdriver here and then the spark spontaneously forms through the air. That's true. He taps it and then pulls it away. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Actually, let's, so, let's watch, the, watch the footage of that real quick. Sure. It's rigged with 20,000 volts. Tap. What is okay. okay. So I also saw that. I also saw that and I prepared some pictures. So okay. the first picture, let's go to the right. First picture is that hand I got closer than than yep. 20 centimeters. So clearly right. it's not, like she should have arced already at this distance. So clearly yeah. it's not at 600,000 kilovolts and even 20,000 mm -hmm. kilovolts, maybe, maybe, maybe not. And right. he does this, he does this, sh this like strike. strike he does like, right he does like a scratch. He like takes his screwdriver and he like scratches the arc, uh, the ARQ arc. And so this reminded me of stick welding. And okay. so stick with welding, you have you have your workpiece, you have an electrode that you put at like negative, I don't know, maybe three hundred volts. Could be could be more or less depending on what type of welding you want to do. And you bring the stick in and then you just do a little little scratches, little scratches on the surface to create that electrical conductivity. And then once you start that weld going, then you pull off a little bit and then you're now like melting your stick into into the metal. And so okay. when you do that with arc welding, in particular stick welding, um, you can actually pull pull the electrode fairly far off the surface, and you see this really bright glowing glowing, I guess, plasma. And so there, the but but I guess the question the question there is, why didn't we start a spark when you're above the surface? You really have to come down and scratch the surface, you like touch the surface to start that arc. And so what I think is happening is, is once you start the, the, the arc, start the, the weld puddle, then you can pull away your electrode a bit and you're, you'll be streaming, you'll be streaming metal ions from your stick and down to the work surface. And so in that case, you don't need 30,000 volts per centimeter anymore because you've now replaced the, the non-ionized air with the electrons bound to the molecules. You replace that with an ionized plasma with electrons mm -hmm. and metal ions, like literally streaming from your stick down to your workpiece. And so it's okay. It's maybe, maybe, maybe this is okay sure. that that this arc is much longer than we predicted um, because he's changing the composition of the gas with little bits of screwdriver <laughs> down to the mm -hmm. arc machine. So I think this is consistent with like the weather. So if a lightning bolt 
So there's a, I've seen footage where like a lightning bolt, it takes a long, a lot of voltage to get a lightning bolt to touch. But then okay. once the lightning bolt is established, there'll be multiple flashes up and down the lightning bolt on the pre-existing path. So you're talking so about I one think, of these scenarios where it's like it's like nighttime, nighttime, and mm-hmm. then and then you see you see like one lightning strike, it's all crash, and then very yeah. shortly after you're pew, 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 like a bunch more around the same area, right? Around, uh, okay. I think it's actually down the same path. It'll oh, be really? like down and up and down, yeah. And it's like the the voltage required to establish the path is like millions, but then I think the voltage required to follow the path that's pre-established with all the ionized air. Is much less, uh, I think, because because yeah, you've reduced the breakdown voltage because you've replaced yeah. the neutral air with this ionized plasma, mm-hmm. which just gives an easy path for electrons to flow. That's right. So, I, d- I didn't know the welding part, but that's consistent with you create an ionized path for the electricity to flow, and so your breakdown voltage is much reduced mm. compared to air, which has no ions essentially. Because right. it's what essentially nitrogen and oxygen, and those are pretty stable molecules they hold on to that their have. Electrons. They hold on their electrons pretty yeah. easily. I mean, pretty strongly. So it's very difficult to ionize. But once it's ionized, plenty of the breakdown voltage is much less. So I think this is all consistent. The fact that yeah. he sparks it and then pulls yeah. away, and then the the spark is intermittent, meaning. It disappears it turns right off. away. It turns off once it gets far far enough away. Yeah. yeah. Which I guess is exhausting the ions either, that are a combination of in the air and from the metal in the screwdriver. I like it. Sure. That's a cool... That's a good that, detail, right? It's a great right? detail. Yeah. It's a cool detail. This was interesting. Renton says the heater for his house is operational. And Hannah's like, what? Implying that there's energy problems in the society. I'm gonna crank up the thermostat as soon as the furnace turns Your on. furnace works? Okay, nobody has that much electricity, not around here. The arc powers the house. So she says, nobody has that much energy, not around here. Apply, I guess that means out in the suburbs, the devastated suburbs, I think that's where he is. Mm-hmm. And so she's surprised by that, which which is interesting because one of the henchmen, actually the Hannah's kind of boyfriend person, hmm. he's like using this butane torch to heat some food or something or drugs. Mm. With bread, which, yeah. <laughs> this is literally a I slice mean, of bread. <laughs> yeah. So this is energy in the sense that it's this is butane, which mm-hmm. is combustible, which could be used for energy, yet he's sort of wasting it. That's so what's going on here? So I guess what Hannah is saying is that there's not enough electricity in the power grid. Okay. But that doesn't, but, but the other guy, he's got energy in terms of like fuel cells. Like you get these like yeah. reloadable butane, you, t- you know, t- you turn the thing upside down, you plug yeah. it in. And yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess you could use that butane to heat your house, but I think you would need a large volume. I don't know. I've never tried to do that. Yeah. But I guess what she's saying is the local power grid is a problem. I see. And I guess there's also the natural gas pipelines that go throughout American society. Yes. And those must be down too. Uh, which I, I is, would say that depends on where what, where, and when your house was built. Okay. Because some houses do natural gas. Some houses do wood. It, right. They're not so common anymore. But And some houses do electrical heater. Mm-hmm. I guess if natural gas was available, um, I guess Renton would want to use it. But... Yeah. If he could build assume, that piping to his house, that, that's yeah. complicated. Um, well, I guess I'm, I'm assuming he would choose a house that had natural gas available. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh, I never thought about this. May not be his house that he purchased like before the collapse. He may be just squatting. I, I, I would imagine he's going through the suburbs, and he wants to find a house that is like not easy to locate, hard to pick out. Like that's a unique house. Like he wants one that would be obvious. There's like thousands of houses that mm-hmm. are all abandoned and dilapidated. And he's in one of them. Like draw no and attention. Draw no attention. And so he's able to walk through the abandoned houses and pick which one he thinks is ideal. Mm. Um, and I think the grid being down and the natural gas lines being down makes sense. Because they would turn off that 
they being the authorities, would turn off the power and natural gas to neighborhoods that don't need it anymore, right? Or even neighborhoods of your enemies, turn it off, right? Turn it off, yeah. Cool, but cool that also means there could be plentiful amounts of like hydrocarbons. It's just point. there's no distribution network to suck up the demand. So this could be relatively cheap, but you have to go into town to fill up. That's once risky you're out now. of town. Mm. That's out, once you're out of town. There's there's really no con, you know, just We're going to get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just use it. Where else are you going to get use it? it? Yeah. So interesting offhand little conversation between Renton and Hannah, but it tells us a lot about the world what going the situation on. is. Yeah. I, I agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the, the block, which is led by Hannah and her kind of boyfriend is coming to Renton's house to steal script. What the heck is script? 30,000 in Stoma chem scripts, environ 65,000 jackpot over a million in tourist scripts. We're going to have ourselves a good time, boys. For the cause, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. We're gonna get a finder's fee. I mean, you gotta take a finder's fee. That's a hundred percent. I mean, I actually agree with that. As the mm-hmm. if, if they so they're on the block side, and I yep. would, if I'm on the block and I'm telling people to go out and scavenge, I would say, mm-hmm. yeah, you gotta keep some percentage of whatever you find because it's, it's, it's good incentive to get people out there. Right. So you take like they get to keep thirty percent. The blocks keep seventy percent. Really motivates people to get out there and find script. Because otherwise, but why int- am I going out to risk? Like that? That's right. Yeah. The interesting part 30, is. 30,000 in scripts. Stolmachem scripts. That's what I heard. Environs. Okay. Environs. 5,000. Jackpot. Over a million in tourist scripts. Is that a million in tourist scripts? So there's at least three currencies in circulation in this sort of dystopian world. But he is able to store the script in a locker. Mm-hmm. So, but it doesn't look like hard currency in the sense of like cash money with paper. It looks like right. cards. It looks like cards. And so it could be, yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing it's not cards in the fa- in the sense of like credit cards where you have an electronic mm-hmm. account somewhere else. And then, yeah. and then, cause, cause otherwise these companies could just shut it down. Like whatever. And we delete, mm-hmm. delete your money. Right. right. Um, so I guess these physical cards are physical in his hand have some type of chip in them or something that assigns their value um mm-hmm. or maybe like a qr code that assigns their value or something yeah which means i think that means cryptocurrency because cryptocurrency has a lot of benefits that you can store off the grid by storing your essentially your signature your digital signature mm-hmm. off the grid um and i guess you could you could make signatures that own say ten thousand of a particular cryptocurrency at a time, and you put that in a Q, that signature in a QR code on the card. Um, and so if you have a stack of these cards, you're owning, that's 10,000 for each card of a particular mm-hmm. cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. The other interesting thing is that there's multiple currencies. Like in the world we right. have today, when you're in a location, we, ha- we use US dollars in the United States. There aren't like multiple currencies out there at the same time. So as I understand, like back when the U.S. was founded, banks would make their own currencies and distribute them wherever. Mm-hmm. So there were multiple competing currencies between different banks. So have we gone back to that where it's like kind of a free for all, like different companies and organizations create their own currencies all the time. I think that's exactly the situation. So if the large government structure, which is holding all the people together mm-hmm. and saying like we should all trust in the same currency, the same dollar, if that fails then you have these big corporations they named three Mm -hmm. that are like we have all these employees we have all this infrastructure we have all these supply chains like Mm -hmm. we're going to make our own currency and then that way our people can work with themselves and trade around because we can't trust the stability of the government level dollar yeah i think this i think this is also entirely plausible yeah oh yeah so so if 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 society is falling apart and the central government becomes weaker and weaker you sort of get this chaos Mm -hmm. and decentralized cryptocurrencies with multiple entities creating their own kind of makes sense it's kind of interesting i mean heck to make it to make it a bit concrete if the u.s dollar became untrustworthy but facebook's employees still needed to have lunch i mean facebook would just make a lunch credit like a stamp card right (laughs) that's effectively currency well that's right 
and this, and then they maybe start making it more official as time goes on, mm -hmm. and they sort of build up their own Facebook economy, yeah. and all of a sudden you've got a currency called like Facebook Coin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Which then you could store in a locker or a safe, and people would want to steal it because then they could buy lunch. I like it. I mean, I don't like it, but it makes sense. <laughs> I mean, I like I like the world building. It, it's okay, great. okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to live in that world. Okay, so I think this is an introduction to who are the main companies. So who are the main, I guess, good side, bad side? I don't even know if the good side. Who are the main competitors? Up north, Taurus security forces battle block their militaries over the Great Slave Lake oil refinery. So it said the block and Taurus are fighting over the Great Slave Lake oil refinery. Uh, in the ARC universe, it seems like a lot of people are fighting and moving north. And if we look at the Great Slave Lake is that's a real lake. That's a real lake? I thought it was fictional. No, it's a real lake in Canada. Hmm. Let's go to maps here. Okay. Let's go maps. Here we go. Yep. So here we go. This is Google Maps. Here's the United States. Here's Canada. And here is the Great Slave Lake. Canada has a Which, slave lake. That's <laughs> I don't think I don't know why it's called the Great Slave Lake. It's a weird name there, Canada. Mm -hmm. But it is it is north, like Alaska, Greenland mm -hmm. level north. So interesting that there's an oil refinery, maybe in one of these larger towns, that has been built in, you know. So that means people want to go north. I think this means global warming has happened s to such a sufficient level that higher latitudes are now livable and so they're starting to build infrastructure up north interesting i did not interpret it like that i interpreted it as in the lower altitudes i guess i guess mm -hmm. in the altitudes lower latitudes so closer yeah. to the equator that's yeah. it's more livable there so that's where you're more likely to encounter people so if you want to not encounter people you go to more remote places which is up there oh. um right that was my guess but also I see. I think for the portion of the clip that we've seen thus far, they're just talking mm -hmm. about the block versus the tor uh, versus Taurus competing for yeah. resources. Like you're, they're fighting right. over the oil refineries. Yeah, right. it makes sense. And for some reason, there's one up here, and they're fighting over right. it. The refinery borders the Arctic parallel neutral zone. Taurus executives accuse the Arctic parallel of providing a safe haven for block leaders. Man so there's a political entity up in the Arctic that is some kind of government mm. that Taurus and the Bloc are both competing to influence. That's what I'm hearing. Ah, they're kind of like the Switzerland where they're like, we're not a part of this, but yeah. And then Taurus or the Bloc, well, I forget which one, they're like, you're harboring criminals. Yeah. Man, why always got to listen to this propaganda? Know thy enemy, my brother. Yeah, well, the Pope tells it like it really is. So the Pope tells it as it really is? Yep. I think... When I heard the Pope, I was thinking that that is just the title for the rebel propaganda, the block propaganda. Um, but is it actually the Pope? I, I thought it's actually the Pope. So it's like corporations versus a religious institution. That's the that's the universe that this is all set in. Gosh, I watched the whole movie thinking that's just the title for the rebel <laughs> propaganda wing. Oh, you mean you mean but, like the like the talking head, like the yeah. the spokesperson? Mm -hmm. is the, the name is the Pope and that's like the radio show the Pope is telling you as it is but you're thinking this could turn into a religious war where the block is represented by the Pope yeah I think so so in you know so I'm imagining a world where corporations are super big super powerful mm -hmm. these enormous entities and they're competing with each other it turns bad it turns military it turns fighting and so then the pope is like no 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 like we are here for humanity and let me i'll guide the way and this is not what we should be doing which actually is just the pope throwing his hat in the ring right and so then so then you get this religious group the block mm -hmm. and its paramilitaries versus corporations okay interesting we got totally different interpretations <laughs> from the pope and it's actually unclear i think and it's open to interpretation i think like what the block is is it a religious organization or is it just sort of some sort of non-religious rebel group 
So when I think of the block, I think it's a group of people that came together. Like we are the block. Like we we formed together to stop mm -hmm. tourists. And the and the beginning of that newsreel says that they are paramilitaries, which also suggests to me, yeah, like a bunch of people grouped together and they formed an army. And so like a citizens uprising. Sounds like Pope's okay. stuff. Yeah. Up north. Taurus security forces battle block paramilitaries over the great... Yeah, block paramilitaries, that's right. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, know thy enemy, my brother. Yeah, well, the Pope tells it like it really is. Taurus execs claim that the energy crisis threatens humankind. Like so, Taurus execs claim that the energy crisis threatens humankind. Sounds very plausible. And Taurus has hired Renton to help solve the energy crisis, which probably means they have enormous teams for it. That means they're trying to solve the energy crisis. Is That sounds pretty good to me. Sounds good to me. Unless you're the Pope. Taurus claims to be humanity's Cut savior. <laughs> Taurus claims to be humanity's savior. If they're investing in energy infrastructure, not entirely implausible. Maybe a little, a little overzealous or something, but... So, there's three of us. Our executioner. Okay, and it's hard to hear the rest of the news. Hmm. But it sounds like there's competing propaganda going on. Sure. I mean, I mean that's also true. Yeah, that's, that's always true. It's constant propaganda, yeah. Yeah. And so this is the rebel. Rebels are generally called the block and the corporation. Like, there's just like one called Taurus. I guess it could be more complicated than that. But there's some the two big factions. I'm not even sure who to call the rebels here, because on one hand you have a corporation versus a, the Pope with with a bunch of people who we think have banded together. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the Pope is an institution that's been around for a couple thousand years, right? Like, that's right. And the the propaganda wing of Taurus calls the Bloc military a paramilitary, which implies that it's un disorganized and mm -hmm. not official. But that's, but that's what you would say. Right? Yeah, that's what you would say. The difference between a paramilitary and a military is like which side you're on. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hannah and Renton talk about escaping. I guess at least Renton talks about escaping, like the rat race of Block versus Taurus. And he talks about the Arctic caravan. This is another one of these let's head north situations. I need a few hours to download the data and pack up the ark. You can't go with him, Hannah. His mind's gone sour. Look up with a migrant caravan, head to the Arctic parallel. I can hack weather drones so we avoid flash. I can't go with you. Just talking migrant caravan going north to the Arctic parallel. I interpreted this as more evidence that there's some sort of runaway global warming event that has made the equator unlivable. And so you head north to the Arctic Circle where temperatures are more moderate. My interpretation was just you... It's like an uncontested land. And so you, mm -hmm. you're a migrant, you go there, you hide out, and then you let Taurus and the Pope fight over other stuff. Right. So you're saying this like, this, I don't know, Canada's huge. Like right. up here, you could, it's some sort of like Wild West settler situation mm -hmm. where you can get up there, find a plot of land, and live your life without... Just quietly outside the drama of Taurus yeah. versus the Pope. Like, yeah. And both, given the world, seem extremely plausible. In fact, they're not even mutually exclusive necessarily. Agreed. Yeah, that's cool. Ark is a Groundhog Day movie, but there's a little bit of a twist here. Hannah starts getting out of the time loop. I shot you. You remember? He's like so cool. in love with her that he's like, oh, I'm so glad you remember. She just shot him. That's that's not why he said that. <laughs> he said that because because they've gone through several loops of where he was the only person that that knew that they were time moving, mm -hmm. right? And so this yeah. time, this time she wakes up and she wakes up in that startled, which is unusual because and he puts it together. He puts it together that she is now understanding that they're going through mm -hmm. a time loop and she's remembering what happened in the previous movie and previous iteration. So this is yep. super cool. This is super cool because in principle we are breaking the rules like mm -hmm. thus far in the movie we've set up that renting goes through time loops and now yep. there's a second person now there's a second person and they explain it they explain it as the closer you are to the arc the more you the the less you remember or maybe i should say it the other way the farther away you are from the arc 
the more you remember from your previous loops. And so, so I'm okay with that, that we're, we're breaking the rules of the movie. We're just we're introducing a rule that hasn't been set yet. Now, yeah. the cool yeah. thing about this is that it immediately sets up consequences because there's five other people in the house. So the yeah. first two people have figured out their own time loops. And not for not not long from now, we're going to get third and fourth and fifth people figuring out that they're in time loops. Super right. cool. Super cool. Although, okay, so what I want to say is she says, he's like, you remember, if somebody just shot you and then they wake up, the first move is to kind of attack them, I think. Still, fu- still F you, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. shot me, killed me. If that, if you didn't, you, and you didn't know we were in a time loop, so you actually were killing me. That's right. So I need to attack you immediately. <laughs> but he, that's right. Their personality hasn't changed, even though they in this time loop they haven't done it, but but they would have. Like it was still in their heart. That's right. That's right. Mm. But back to the rules. So I think this bed is like on the periphery of the house and somehow the arc is in the middle of the house. And so their memories turn on first because they're farther away, but still within inside the circle. That's right. So yeah, the rule that Renton says is the further you are from the arc, the sooner you recover Mm -hmm. your memories. Yeah. So I think we can get a little clue about where the arc is. It's just somewhere to the right of them. Because yeah, Renton must be further. Renton must be... Oh, that's right. Because he's on the one... He must be... The arc must be... Um, if we're, he's laying on the bed to his left. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is a picture of the arc right here. Picture of the arc. This is what it looks like. And let's listen to an explanation of how it works. Why is this loop different? Sonny's aware of the time loops. Sonny's aware? How? I don't know. How did you Third person. Aware? I just woke up and remembered. Me too. So, is remembering just random? No. No, 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 no. The arc emits electromagnetic frequencies that could affect memory. We're farthest away from the arc when it resets. Yeah, which is why the effect wore off on us first. And now Sonny, sh- So, he's saying that the electromagnetic waves, so to speak, from the arc are deleting the memory? And so when you're farther away, the deletion becomes less effective. It's reasonable because the power is constant along a sphere. So if you're getting farther out, then it's dying like a one over R squared. I'm down with that. Okay. Okay. Shit. Data is still the same. Loops begin and end at the same time, then everything resets. Why doesn't the data also reset? Time logs are housed in the arc's core structure above the fuel cells. So I guess that makes sense that the memory in the computer is reset almost never because it's the closest it can possibly can be to the arc so the logs are always kept yeah but the humans are farther outside of the arc a different radii from the center of the arc and so their memories turn on and uh, continue at different rates kind of opposite of what you think you think closer on you would keep your memories farther away you would not oh, remember but it, it makes opposite sense. of that it made sense to me, or I guess maybe I made it made sense. I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> is that the, the closer you are to the source, the stronger the effect. And so the yep. further away, the less of the effect, which means the less you get stuck in its time loop. That's true. I guess less stuck in the time loop means memories get preserved, which is yeah. more of like a continuous time instead of a looping time. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Exactly. I'm, I'm there. Okay. Also, look at the engineering for this. Like wires galore. My mm-hmm. God, mm-hmm. look at that! Holy, he must have a panel in there that is just unbel- like a panel that's like you know a meter by a meter with just coax and BNC and connectors all over the place. Yep. His labeling, like, oh boy, it better be crisp, better be clean. <laughs> Otherwise, if you unplug something, you're like, I don't know where this went. <laughs> I don't know where this went. And then you're like looking for the other end of the cable and you can't find it because mm-hmm. nothing's labeled so his labeling better be spot on okay so we get a description of how the time loop is behaving where it comes this from this line is time this is when the loop begins at 6 11 a.m because electrocuted himself on the arc this caused forward time to bend back on itself creating a close time 
And the day repeats. Time resets every three hours, 14 minutes, and 15 seconds. Yeah, so cool. Is this mm-hmm. is this reasonable? Is this is this interesting? And also, wait, how long? It, he said he said the loop takes three hours, fourteen minutes, and fifteen seconds. That's pi, isn't it? That's pi. That's pi. Yeah. Three point one four one five. Thanks. So yeah, little? so <laughs> pi pi came out as the time interval, and I mm-hmm. thought about this. I said maybe maybe that's a magic number, because because like for example, when we have electricity and magnetism equations, you get these one over four pi epsilon knots floating around yeah. all the time, and then mm-hmm. depending on the geometry of the problem, depending on if you have to integrate twice or whatever, you end up getting left mm-hmm. over with a pi, and so maybe maybe this is. I mean, and also pi is a half circle. It's two pi for a full circle, right? But maybe that's also okay. So so maybe this time loop, the, the, so two things. One, maybe the time loop that it takes an hour, it takes it takes 3.14159 um, seconds or, or hours. Start. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe the length of the time is pi. Makes sense because from E and M equations that often gets mm-hmm. left around. That's right. And then maybe the fact that it's not a half circle is okay because if you were to count this time in a full circle you should get two pi but this is it's counted twice like every every you do a vertical line test and mm-hmm. every one of these points in the circle every point is counted twice except for the ends and so maybe a half circle maybe pi is right maybe pi is right so my only pushback on pi is that time is is a weird base like hours are base 12 <laughs> seconds and minutes are base 60 so if you had like 3.14159 and base 10 and you translated that to this mixture of base 12 and base 60. Okay. Would, <laughs> would, point. would the the numbers come out? My instinct is saying probably my instinct not. Is, my instinct is saying super no. Yeah. I think seconds are okay because that's based off of something physical. That's based off of like the cesium clock. Although why cesium? It could have been hydrogen. I guess if you stay, if you pick a unit like seconds okay. and you stick with it and you only change the decimal place like in si mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but you don't have mixtures of bases then i think that makes you would probably sense. see like you know 314.15 seconds maybe or something like that which where, is like six hours or some something okay. whatever it is so maybe cut that in half That's cool though. Maybe well, okay, yeah. hang on. This is a man-made machine. Yeah. And the man-made machine's computer clocks will be working in base 12 hours in 60 minutes and yeah. whatever many seconds. Right? Okay. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Okay, okay. So maybe it's base ambivalent. Bases? It's like no oh, matter how built, you... it's built into human bases because mm-hmm. the computer's mm-hmm. clock is already going to be built into our 24 hours a day. 60, that sounds like minutes an hour. Yeah, that sounds plausible. Somehow there's some coupling between the way we defined pi and our bases of our time such that it was always going to come out that way. That would be interesting to see how that could even occur in a calculation. But since we don't understand the calculations, it's possible. Possible. Also, yeah, like so maybe it's, it's, visual. it's a really clean visual for understanding what's going on here. Yeah, yeah. Renton's super smart. He like piece I mean, this together. He's like, I know how to draw this out in a simple diagram. I mean, it to take something complicated and explain it in nice, simple terms, graphically or with words, is actually a sign that the intelligence is really high. If you take Absolutely. something complicated and can't distill it down, that can not always. Gosh, I don't it, want to say it's, always. It, it's it's somehow yeah. It's often associated with an inability to distill down to the important facts which means right. you don't really understand what's going on because you can't figure out what's mm-hmm. important, what's not important. Right. So you're just like, here's the whole mess. Like you deal with it. Like, yeah. Right. But at the same time, sometimes co- situations and ideas are complicated and there's no reducing it down to more basic elements. Yeah. But understanding when you can and when you can't is also a sign of intelligence. I, mean, I guess an example would be the Yosemite wolves. You can't, mm-hmm. and then like the the... It's a nonlinear system with the wolves versus the deer versus the plants versus the flowers and the bees. Like you, you can't reduce it down to just the wolves because the wolves need to interact with other other stuff. Like, right. Yeah. So I guess ecology. I guess that's the study of how wildlife and plants and all that stuff interact. You cannot distill it down into simple things. So you have to just sort of dump the complexity down, and that's mm-hmm. that's as simple as it gets. 
But here, it's super simple in a, in yeah. a sense. <laughs> yeah. I've explained this to people that physics is complicated, but also one of the simplest sciences because we are able to like break things down to really simple stuff. Yeah, you know, and I've also felt this like when you're learning physics, it feels really complicated and difficult. But then once you understand some concept, you're like, oh, that's it. Like idea oh. number two falls out of number one. If you understand Fine. one, then two happens. Yeah. And now three F happens. I'm starting to put it together. Wait, this isn't that complicated at all. Yeah. But unlike psychology experiments, those things are complicated. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Ugh. Absolutely. Messy. This next clip is how does the arc work? And it seems to give us infinite energy, infinite time. And we'll refine this idea a bit more in the next coming clips. But let's start with this one. How does the arc work? Okay. I mean, I mean, essentially, these fuel cells power the arc. In turn, mm -hmm. the arc recharges the fuel cells. It, it never needs an external power source. But so that seems violating to me. That seems like conservation of energy is not respected so you get batteries yeah. that charge that that run a motor and then the motor that charges the batteries now that's right. that's that's how cars work and that's okay yeah. because we're ultimately getting the energy source to turn the motor from gasoline this i mean it, it would yeah it, I, I think it doesn't make sense at all um right. and so then hannah she like it, it, it iterates it in her own words and yeah she's yeah. saying unlimited energy and unlimited time right an unlimited energy machine that also produces unlimited time. No wonder Taurus wants it back. Not unlimited time, the same amount of time over and over. Okay, so Renton's super sharp. He like hears what she says mm -hmm. and he's like, mm, minor minor correction. Okay, so so he's saying that it's not it is it is unlimited energy. So right. so the machine is running off of these power cells, but the then the, the machine when it's running charges those power cells. So it is unlimited energy. But this the same amount of time because you go through the loop the same three hours, 15 minutes, 14 seconds, whatever it is. It, in some sense though, Hannah is correct that there's unlimited time because the memories are preserved. So That's somehow you can learn. So if it's, if it's three hours and you do it three hours a thousand times, you can get 3,000 hours of learning done mm -hmm. in three hours of normal time. Yeah. So in some sense, that has no limit. Gosh, that would be an absolute like college fantasy, right? Like, you know, like that's right. That's right. I can just loop this over and over again. I'm going to master it. Then I'll rejoin everyone else in regular time. It's just A plus, A plus, A plus. Like, a plus not a problem. A plus, yeah. And it looks like you did it in three hours, but actually it was thousands and thousands of hours mm -hmm. just over and over again. Right, you're doing crunches the whole time. You show up later around, you're like six pack. And everyone's like, what the hell? You're like, all I did was study. <laughs> I studied for three hours and I came back with six pack yeah. abs. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't this happen does. in... In the original Groundhog Day movie with Bill Murray, he actually like learns to play the piano to like a high level because he just he's going through the day so many times he learns yeah, right. all kinds of things, and he never ages. What oh, fantasies? Fantasy. <laughs> I'd be an Olympian in every sport. Then why wouldn't you? Okay, and then mm -hmm. the final iteration of this: Renton says limited energy and reused time. The loop ends at nine twenty-five because that's when the power source runs out. When the the fuel cells go dead. When the loop resets, the fuel cells are still charged. The arc isn't producing unlimited energy. It's just using the same energy. Cool. So so, I, so it's not producing new energy. It's using the same energy again and again. And so yeah. does this does this make sense? I mean, I guess, I guess if you're resetting time, you're going back to the beginning, then yep. that energy is no longer spent. Like it's, it's, it's returned, right? Yeah, so I guess in if you if in in physics if you go backwards or forwards in time, then the amount of energy stays constant the whole time, whether you're going forwards or backwards in time. However, the amount of usable energy, forward in time decreases, and backwards in time de increases. Okay. Yeah. Because once you like run an engine or run a refrigerator, the useful energy is diminished. So if you run it forwards in time, you lose the, the energy, the usable energy, and then you run it backwards and go back to the original, you gain the, the usable energy back. Mm -hmm. So somehow it's still conservation of energy. Energy is still conserved. Oh. And because you're going back in time, uh, the useful energy comes back. Right. So, so the way I thought about this was I thought about it in terms of a translation symmetry. Okay. So if you do a spatial translation and you find that that there's no dissipative forces, then you get conservation of momentum. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so 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 yeah, yeah. So so if you if you have a scenario like you're on a train or whatever, mm-hmm. and you can slide this thing around, so a spatial translation, if the yeah. dynamics of whatever is happening doesn't isn't affected, then momentum is conserved. Okay, so I did the same idea, but with time. Yeah. So you do a time translation symmetry, not not space anymore, but you know time axis. Mm-hmm. And so if there's no dissipative forces, then the energy should be conserved. And so. I guess what would I think we're saying the same thing actually like if so a dissipative force would be if you were if you had friction for example or as the example as you gave it if you were running a machine so you have to do work in, in order mm-hmm. for the for the just so you turn potential energy into work energy plus heat that heat is gone out to the universe you cannot reassemble it and so it's energy that's been that's been mm, diffused it's been it's been lost to the system okay but if you had never did those, then uh-huh. you never dissipated those those energies, which means right. the energy could come back, which means it could yeah. be conserved. Yeah. So it's a cool sequence where we go from like implausible, like super implausible and super mm-hmm. implausible to um, fairly plausible and okay. fairly plausible. Makes right? sense. Yeah. Makes sense because now this is okay. Still, we would never, we don't know in our current understanding of science how a Groundhog Day scenario would work. But this is like much more plausible makes sense, than right? infinite, infinite, infinite. This is limited energy, reused time. That makes right. it sounds more plausible. It's tighter than when we started. So, yeah. in the very first clip where they said unlimited energy, unlimited time, I'm thinking mm-hmm. as a physicist, I'm thinking like, is this is super not real? But maybe it is for the movie. Maybe I just accept mm-hmm. it and try to work with it. Like, don't worry about yeah. it. And, and then as the movie goes on, it makes more and more sense. Right. And it's Renton more and more plausible. is like kind of putting it together over time as he's confused. Yep. So it's like built up over the movie. It's it's cool. It's a cool it's sequence. Yeah. There's the cool science, but there's also this cool political backdrop of Taurus versus the block. Taurus has standing armies, okay? Fighter drones, ZMPs, fucking nukes. And the bloc would have the Ark. Forever the idealist. Forever the pessimist. Realist, okay? Evidence and facts, not wishful thinking. I call it hope. When did you become so naive? Oh, God damn it! Fuck you! Okay, let's not throw things. <laughs> <laughs> We're still inside. Yeah. So which side would you be on? Okay, so I guess first describe it. So Taurus is like this super corporation and it has a bunch mm-hmm. of technology and security forces. And they said mm-hmm. ZMPs, which which are EMPs, I guess, somehow, but yeah. delivered by autonomous drones. And then the yeah. block feels ragtaggy, mm, mm-hmm. paramilitary, led yep. by the Pope. Taurus. Well, I'm interpreting Tor- Taurus. the Taurus, Taurus, right? Taurus. The block led by the Pope. Led by, I think I'm perturbing as like a non-religious rebel organization uh, against and the Pope Taurus. is just the face, and the Pope is just the face. So it's Whereas not. You're it's interpreting not actually, it. It's not actually a religious people. It's he's just the front man. Mm-hmm. Right. Taurus. Well, I'm still going like Taurus. Super Taurus. Yeah, super Taurus. Right? Because if I'm a member of Taurus, I'm protected. Yeah. I'm part of an organization that's organized who can defend yep. itself. Yeah. If I'm a member of the Bloc. I'm out in desolation, in dilapidated places, lacking medical Rag care, tag, lacking... Disorganized, scrounging all the time. Right. And I'm not even sure I believe the propaganda from the block that they're the good guys. That's right. They, I mean, we know... And Is Taurus the bad guy, or is that actually block propaganda? Or is it... Which Ooh, one is true? I don't boy. know. Although I, the block is the underdog, and everybody loves an underdog story. But the thing is, are they the underdog? I guess. Well, just by seeing by the operations that the tor- that Taurus is able to launch like ships and drop drones and stuff, whereas blocks are scavenging stuff, right? So if the block is really ragdaggy, if the block wins, then I could be one of the high-ranking members of a small group. Whereas if Taurus wins, I'm a nobody. Like we win, but like I'm back into a factory, like whatever. Like that sucks. Okay, yeah. So I guess. You could go all in with the block, try to get good positioning within the block's hierarchy so that Shoot when the they win, you are in a position to help build the society next and you could be in a great mm-hmm. position. Mm-hmm. There is also the avenue of what Renton does, which is check out, I'm going north. Yep. 
Yep. And I'm going to not join Taurus. I'm not going to join the block. I'm going to go find a plot of land or something and go live life out by not changing, choosing. Science. Gosh, isn't, isn't this the 13 colonies versus England and Canada? <laughs> Canada's like the, the option of like, we're, we're not a part of this. Like, like we'll check in in a few decades. Like <laughs> chill out. Well, I guess, I guess technically Canada would have been part of the British officially. They had fought on the British side. But I guess an individual within Canada would be like, I don't, I don't care about your tea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think my ranking goes Taurus. Yep. Uh, homesteader. Yep. And then the block. Okay. But what I if think. the block has cute, cute girlfriends? Yeah. So Renton is in love with Hannah. Yep. Probably a flaw in his character. I'm interpreting it as a flaw in his character because she's got problems. And so she supports the block, so I want to support her. So then I will choose the block. Um, but that's probably the only scenario where I'm going to do that. Confirmed. Love is, a, love is a flaw. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Could the block ever convince you to join up? Like if Taurus was like Tor Taurus was so bad, and the block you they convinced you that they were the good guys, would you ever join up? I mean, I guess if they've convinced me that they're, they're good guys, they've convinced me. That's true. So then you have no choice but to join up. Yeah, unless I'm like a teenager edgelord, like, no, you're the good guys. I'm not joining up. I'm maybe. not joining. I'm a rebel. <laughs> a rebel. Look at me. Rebel. <laughs> so we've got two stills here of the equations that are written on Renton's, I don't know what you call this, clear board? Clear board, but, transparent board, yeah. Yeah. This window. Um, and there's whiteboard to the left here. Can we make sense of these equations? To me, this looks like quantum field theory equations. Anytime okay. I see denominators like this, I'm oh, thinking, I see. Although I think he's missing a parenthesis because one squared. What's the point? Um, but oh, yeah. I see these, and I'm thinking propagator type things. I think normally this would be a minus sign, but I'm thinking propagators. I'm seeing Hamiltonians with and Hamiltonian the dots. Oh my God, with triple the triple dot. triple time derivative Hamiltonian, yeah, yeah, and so I've never I, taken quantum field theory, and I'm seeing C's and N's. Maybe this is some kind of it could be, gosh, statistical mechanics where there's just some kind of partition function thing. Oh yeah, could be, could be, but I don't see any C, betas. Oh, uh, that's true. Do you see any betas? Of, and then beta or could be. Oh, that's right. I don't see any betas. Betas could be also the uh, V over C. True. But I don't see any of those I either. also don't see those. So I think without seeing the work that built up to this, this is really challenging to figure out unless I've worked in this field, which I have not. So but it does feel like from, your, from what you're saying that quantum field theory, it looks like these are the most quantum equations these equations suit quantum field theory the most. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm assuming, because this is a cool scrollable board, that the work leading up to this is oh. above, and you can just scroll scroll down or yeah, scroll you know up, whichever. You know, you know who is famous for that? Who? Like Gauss, <laughs> Gauss of Gauss. Oh. He would work for like 20 days, 40 days, like grinding out this complicated math, and then he would, then he would get like a clean, simple, elegant answer at the end, and then he'd throw away the work. And he'd be like, look, other scientists, isn't this what you got? Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, so so obvious, yeah, of course. But like people, he took away all the intuitive and all like the grinding work. right. That it, once it became self-evident to Gauss, he was like, it should be self-evident to everyone. To everyone, all right? But, See it? Here, let me explain it. It's simple, but it's like mm -hmm. getting there was hard. Yeah, yeah. But to be fair to Renton here, this looks like work that he's working through because he's like scribbling True. stuff out. True. And so he's not, this is not something I mean, he heck, would present. There's not even an equal sign on the left. Oh gosh. So that this is continue to work from something else. Yeah. No one okay, this that. is one expression, yeah. And then on the whiteboard. Okay. I'm seeing, I'm seeing some, I think this is EM, E and M because I'm seeing wedge products, the wedge okay. operator. Yeah. I'm seeing a beta. I'm going to say that's V over C. L Plausible. line element. Yep, DL. Uh, and then this was the, I think these right here are the equation, Maxwell's equations written in like the 
differential geometry forms. Oh, the yeah, the theorist stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, so it's like I, super like, elegant, super clean, but it's also like, what is this? Yeah, it's super not useful, but it's like super clean. It's like a cool way yeah. to present it. I it's, see a J here too. That's current. Which current dense? Yep. I see E's. That means electric field. Electric field. Yeah. A for area maybe. And B dot DZ. Okay. Mm. And cool pictures. Fle like flexy stuff. Flux. Yeah. So okay, this is also feels great because it looks like to me some uh, Renton is on this board here like figuring stuff out, skipping steps because he doesn't need to. This is work is for uh, him. Yeah. And a outsider coming in cannot we cannot follow this. Like it's not is, it's not clean. Right. It's not like pretty PowerPoint stuff. It's actual nitty gritty how you how you would actually do this stuff. Right. It's a mess actually. <laughs> right. Yeah, and oh you may see this did not work. So he's even not drawn good. a picture to figure out what happened and then it did not work. So it's like a mess. This is not something you would present to somebody because it's just so difficult it's to just understand. for yourself in your basement. Don't worry yeah. about it. You'll clean it up before publication. Yeah. So this feels feels like a realist white realistic whiteboard and a realistic clear scrolly board. Mm-hmm. So this is one of these houses here is Renton's house. I think it may be off camera. Off what camera, happened yeah. to the suburbs? What is going on? It's total desolation. Yeah, falling apart. Like windows are all gone. Oh wait, look at that plane. That plane. Oh yeah. It's in, it's more or less intact. That's an excellent crash landing, right? Cause like if a plane crashes, yeah. they're often, it's like miles apart of debris, yeah. right? This, I think this plane more or less survived. Yeah, yeah. so that means that there was some emergency they were able he, the pilot was able to land the plane in emergency mode and Super people smooth. were able to get out and then the shell burned a little bit yeah and then society is so fallen apart that rescue teams and stuff mm -hmm. were like well that's there forever yeah i mean how are you going to get that out yeah yeah and and yeah it looks like things really fallen apart in yeah. terms of like water yeah right none of these lawns are green that's right <laughs> So oh, it's I mean, neither it's, it's, raining it's, or or an irrigation is falling apart. Yeah, cool thing is there's no like footpaths. I guess there's some green. Is what you're saying? I think there's a little. There's some grass and some trees are clinging to life. So okay, okay. maybe there's some precipitation every once in a while. Hmm. I noticed these trash piles in the back. Oh, these ones, right? These big yeah, ones. Yeah yeah. 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 Is this a part of like a? Is Ark a part of the Wally universe? Oh gosh. I mean, Wally, what is post apocalyptic? So. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I do see this flaring over here. Oh, like a, the, like a natural like a, gas flare. Oh, it's like a, or a smokestack or something. Yeah. No, Which but it's black this, smoke. This may be operational on some level, but then yeah. this is abandoned. So this is some kind of like population decrease. So right. abandon the suburbs, plus society's falling apart. But there are mm. also planes, they're kind of fuzzy. Yeah. Planes so there are large organizations that can field mm -hmm. planes, but yeah, suburbs are toast. All right. So maybe some environmental catastrophe plus population decline gets you this. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Very plausible. They do. A, it's just a great job in this movie of showing how the world is without having to show too much. Yeah. No exposition. Don't tell me to show me it. For example, here yeah this is interesting toxic air so they have this like gas mask that helps them breathe but it's not really required that's right which makes me think because the first the first thing it makes me think is the air is uncomfortable to breathe but it won't kill you it's not like chlorine gas where you just die right right so it's somehow it's uncomfortable to breathe but you can survive but it's nice to have the gas mask or whatever this is air mask he calls it yeah to filter the air to make it more comfortable which made me think co2 Okay. So possible. I mean, it, it's. I think that's. It could be. Yeah. Carbon sure. dioxide. And then, so if we go to carbon dioxide, so I'm thinking the concentration of carbon dioxide is really high. So. Oh, okay. So you're saying you're saying that with corporations burning, corporations and the block burning through carbon mm -hmm. fuels in order to run their war. And then also with whatever happened on the planet, such that all the green stuff has died, then we're not mm -hmm. cleaning out carbon, replacing it with oxygen effectively, right? And so right. then you're saying that the atmosphere is taking effect 
or is yep. feeling the effect and to the point where humans need to have this mask not not like all the time they're not like sealed up but they yep. need to have it when they're walking around right so that makes me think if we look at the concentrations of co2 so this is chart on wikipedia uh, percentage of co2 in inspired air and specifically it's like the human effects the, the tolerance yeah. to increased atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration so right. what happens to a person yeah so at these low levels that we have today current atmosphere is 0.04 percent uh the duration we can sustain is lifetime and so then, no problems yeah. and then it's saying between 1.5 and 2.5 percent there's mild respiratory stimulation that doesn't sound like what they're going through it sounds like right. they're going through some serious discomfort like quickly um, right right and they're not going to die right away which okay. makes me think we're in this range here so let's see moderate respiratory stimulation probably not strong enough moderate respiratory stimulation exaggerated respiratory response to exercise probably not enough prominent respiratory stimulus exaggerated respiratory response to exercise that sounds about right we're talking hours we we don't see them run and we don't see them jumping jacks or whatever mm -hmm. but they also are very quickly reaching for the mask yeah so that is we're looking at something like four to six percent co2 in the atmosphere hmm. to get this kind of discomfort which is significant it's 10 times more than current day levels mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so that gosh, significant pollution to get to this point i guess it doesn't yeah. have to be it doesn't have to be but gosh co2 when you, but significant pop, significant pollution to get to this point but on the other hand if you are really backed into a corner to like an existential threat mm -hmm. then you do what you gotta do yeah pollute pollute and I guess believe. there could be a runaway effect where like if we get to point oh we get to point oh five percent, point six percent, we're cool. But at point eight percent, the atmosphere goes into some runaway and the CO two goes flying high. Yep. Could be. It's a complicated yeah, greenhouse system. Greenhouse gases are definitely a complicated system where you cannot do these yeah. simple reductions. It is yeah. one of these like high high complexity systems and you can't get around it. Yeah. Oh, God, that would be so uncomfortable to not be able to go outside and get fresh air. Oh. Right. Gosh, we'll be like living underwater. Like, I want to go for a walk. Like, time to suit up. Time, time to, to suit to up. Mess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So annoying. So this is at the very end. So Renton and, and Hannah are outside. And they see this boundary. They see this circle around their home. Mm -hmm. And I did not understand what it is and why it's there. Okay, so hold on. So this, this circle looks like, like this. Yes. This is the dark circle. Mm -hmm. And then this is the house they are in. Yep. So somehow this circle is like that, and this is what the circle looks like. Yep. Okay. Okay, so it's petrified. It feels petrified. What is it? I think it's a boundary. Time loop ends here. So only time inside the circle has been moving? There's the circle. Oh, and the desolation, my God. So I don't get it. So, so I mean, super cool, visually, like very stark, very stunning. Yep. But my understanding of the arc was that the closer you are to the arc, the stronger yep. the effects of the time looping. And so the further away, then the weaker the effects. And so here we're shown the boundary shouldn't this be where there's no looping so shouldn't this be kind of normal and and so i what i would imagine is that on the inside you get this just dried grass that's underneath underneath of renton's hand yeah, but on right. the outside on the left side that should just be regular time and so if they're saying that this thing's been looping for thousands of years or whatever then shouldn't just everything beyond the circle all be petrified so i I interpreted it slightly differently. Okay. I was thinking that this is the hard cutoff. Okay. And everything in here is going through the time loop. And the, the farther away you are from the center of the arc, mm -hmm. the more the memories get transferred from one loop to the, uh, to yeah, the next. Yeah, because it's weaker. But this, yeah. right, but this entire thing is going through time loop. Yep, I agree. And then this is normal time. Mm -hmm. And then somehow, so if they're doing a three-hour time loop, 
the loop will go through maybe potentially unlimited loops, but it'll always reset. So like this, if this is dry grass and this is dry grass, when the time loop begins, it does this side does one loop and it's it resets, so it's dry grass again. So this is always reset. So this is all these two will always match. But maybe the boundary is where somehow the time loop actually goes forward. It actually feels the effects every time. So this could potentially be millions of years of loops all mm. compounded on top of one another. Or this one's truly looping and this one's just normal. That's how I interpreted it. Okay, I can... Okay, I, I guess maybe... I still feel like the outside should have progressed on with forward time, which would mean that stuff is is aging. But what you're saying is that this is kind of the meshing point between the right side, which is looping time, and left side, which is forward time. But actually what the arc does is... I guess more maybe from the inside's perspective, it looks yeah. like the outside's not looping. And so this middle ground is the kind of, I don't know ground. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is the part that experiences both times. So it, it gets the, the loops, which means it's actually progressed through lots of years, Yeah. but also it's being applied linearly because it's on the boundary. So then Something the result like of the result of that is patrification. Whereas the right side yeah. gets just looped fully and the left side doesn't yeah. get loops at all. Mm -hmm. So I guess okay. it has to, this is some sort of many worlds interpretation. So potentially the loop could be exited for each loop. And so however many loops that they went through is an additional oh. universe. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's plausible then if we do a many worlds interpretation. Mm -hmm. Whereas you were thinking that this, so if we do a thousand loops, then this side should have aged a, aged a thousand times three hours. Right. And this side should have aged normally. Right. So I did so, a black hole interpretation, a single mm -hmm. universe black hole interpretation, where yeah. your time is kind of unknown inside the black hole. Like we have mm -hmm. no idea what happens to time in there. And so from the outside universe, we you, you would look at the house and be like, there's a weird thing that Time is weird in there. I don't know. Time is weird. Yeah. So it does it does whatever it wants to. Right? Yeah. So, um, but from the outside, it would mm -hmm. you would so from the from the inside, you would see the outside universe have normal time, and it would just progress mm -hmm. like normal. And then from the outside, you would just look into a a, a time hole. Yeah, it would be like it would, so. In your interpretation, you'd look if you're look, if you're on the outside of the circle looking in, you'd see the house resetting every three hours that's right that's right like, and so heck? like you'd go into winter and snowing outside but on the inside of the house it's still whatever season this is right and then i think for my interpretation it was if i'm on the outside i just i don't even notice i just progress through the three hours like normal and one of the loops is exited on my timeline and that can that's the one that continues on and which i don't sure. know how it's chosen but well, just you would spin up a new timeline every time it looped. Mm -hmm. So, sure, sure. Time looping, mm, sure. time travel is counterintuitive. Mm. Overall, very good movie. Very engaging. Yeah. Very entertaining. I, I really liked how it, like, the scientificness tightened up over time. Yeah, I really like that. And the journey each time you sort of get to see what decisions Renton and Hannah, and then eventually you know, the mercenary and the other block people do each time to try to salvage the situation. It really is like a video game. You want to just fight the boss in different times. <laughs> you got to choose a side. It's a Taurus of the block. Who would you choose? Yeah, I think I would definitely choose Taurus, number one, because of the safety aspect. And yeah. I think they're more organized, even but, though they might be doing evil stuff. But they're like dystopian corporation future. Like, isn't this, isn't this what we're trying not to do? But isn't that kind of what we do in the modern world? Like we have I, better societies in the West, but we do shady stuff around the world. And we're like, well, I wish we didn't, but I like the safety of where I'm at. That's true. But that's like a for right now thing, right? Not mm -hmm. Taurus definitely could get worse. On the other hand, if the block is really run by the Pope, like I, I think, mm -hmm. then isn't isn't the Pope responsible of like the Dark Ages <laughs> humans? That's right. If a block wins, it could make chaos. 
It, well, it could, even though it they could it, take up, it take it could grab a lot of power, and then we could go back to religious cultures of the Middle Ages. That's right. And it could, you know, it could even be like while they're rebellion, while they're a rebellion, they have this ideal like I'm going to be perfect and I'm going to democracy and human rights. But then once they grab power, it all falls Th apart. Things change. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And the final statement is I don't trust Anna. You take the arc of the block and trust him. Trust Hannah. So like they're going to restart the time loop and he says, trust Hannah is telling himself, but I don't think he should trust Hannah because her character throughout the movie has just been all about the block. Like her, she's, she's on a mission. She's on a mission for the block. You say you want to solve the world's energy crisis, but you just want to run away. Yes, with you. No, it's time we end this. We should go while we have the chance and take the Ark to the block. Just hear me mm -hmm. out. No. Any battle the block loses with the Ark, they'll be able to loop back in time and fight again until That's they get good. it right. Until yep. we win. You don't know that. Neither do you. But if Taurus gets the Ark, it'll be unstoppable. Taurus can't get the Ark, but neither can the block. She's just full of emotions. And he, and Renton has a point. He's like, you don't know that. And she's like, neither do you. She just counterattacks. And so Renton is saying like, hey, I'm neutral here. Like, I don't mm -hmm. I don't have a moral decision to be yeah. on Taurus or the block. But but Hannah, she's like, block, 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 block. So I think Renton is a really intelligent guy. And he's picking up on like, it's block could be good. The Taurus could be bad, but I'm also getting un inundated with propaganda. So I'm not hundred percent sure. So I want to go my own way, like North and find a homestead. Mm -hmm. Hannah is like, she's in it. She's in the block. Mm -hmm. She's convinced. She's fully so psyoped into the block. Yeah. So he has a reason not to trust her there. Yup. And she goes on. She does like manipulative stuff. You would rather keep it to yourself. You haven't changed. Still selfish. I'm selfish. Nope. All I care about is you. All you care about is the block. When there is a war on, I don't have time for us. Then what are you fighting for? The Ark is dangerous in the wrong hands. I don't trust the block. You trust me. <laughs> I shot you. She's like, trust me, but she like she actively killed him in one of the in one of the loops. And the whole the whole reason that they're there with the five intruders into his house is because Hannah marked him as a mark to get robbed. That's right. And she's doing these like emotional volleys, like you're selfish, but then trust me. And she's just leveraging his essentially love for her yep. to get whatever she wants. And it's just he shouldn't trust her. Shouldn't trust her. It gets worse. You're nothing to Taurus. An expendable pawn. Like you are to the block? If yep. Taurus gets the Ark, he's got a point. millions more than they already have. People have been killing each other since the dawn of time. True. Yeah, True. because of people like you. You misunderstand Accusation. Me. This war kills us all. I don't want that. So you're giving the Ark to the bastards who started the war. Better that someone wins than everybody dies. Take wait, wait, pause, 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 pause. So that was the bad guy. And... Yeah what what she's saying is right but also what he's saying is right too right like they're just they're the same people on different sides of this conflict i mean possibly not every conflict some conflicts i think in the real world do have a good side and a bad side like yeah, it's side better the other people correct <laughs> but like in world war ii it's better that the allies won than nazi germany won in europe because nazi that. germany was kind of horrible Okay, but this is this is an instance where we don't know the scenario. We don't know who Taurus is. We mm -hmm. don't know who the block is, right. and so it's morally ambiguous, right? So yeah. So since you're we're in this world, we're inundated with propaganda. You have limited information. Telecoms, you know, like cell phone service, probably inundated with like AI propaganda just and spam. different things. Just, yeah, if just... yeah, if you can get your hands on the news. So like, it's hard to be a true believer in this right. scenario. Right. Um, Which is why Renton's so, like, I'm neutral. I don't know what to do. So these two are arguing. They both have good points, assuming the information they have is true. Mm -hmm. Which it all be made, their viewpoints may all be made on false premises anyway. Yep. So. But if she's operating <laughs> off of false premises, how can you trust her? But here, Renton does. Can you play? Really? There's no world left. There's no hope for Wait, go, go, go back a little bit. We, we need to see what he said yeah. there the ark to the bastards who started the war 
better that someone wins than everybody dies. True. That's Take fair. the Ark to the block. Really? There's no world left. There's no hope for us. She, she finally she, got the weapon she wanted, and then she's like, okay, now we hug. Yeah. So it's really manipulative. She's been withholding love and physical affection from the, this person who loves her until yep. she gets exactly what she wants, which is the oh, arc weapon. going to the block, and right. then she shows it. So it's super manipulative super behavior, manipulative. which means <sighs> can't trust her. Can't trust her. But and then, and then some, the groundhog. That's right, rose-colored glasses. And especially rose colored glasses to the time effect. Like, great, right? because this is a Groundhog movie and they're going to go back in time. There's no guarantee that she's going to have that same personality. Say, say if she did have a revelation here and she's like, oh man, I, I am morally ambiguous. I should be on the good side. Like, that might reset. That's right. And also, let's say they exit the loop because they are taking the block to the arc. Mm -hmm. As soon as she gets what she wants, She's either moving on to the next thing she wants from Renton yeah. or she just abandon him, abandons him entirely because she doesn't need him anymore. She explicitly said that she doesn't have time for him. She's there for the right. block. So he doesn't actually listen to what she says because nope. he's so smitten. Because he listens to his heart. Renton. See, there's Renton. so many character flaws in this. She is not such a great person, which... May or may not be because she got captured and tortured and stuff. So she's yeah, yeah, now tortured, like a torture, brutal whatever. person. Like a little torture. Like it's fine. Um, so she wasn't able to hold under her man her humanity through dark times. But, but Renton, Renton, who did not get captured like an right. idiot, he's fine. Yeah. But he's he's too naive for this brutal world. Like an idiot. <sighs> idiot. So that's where they leave it. That's where yeah. the sorry, that's where the movie ends. And it's unclear, is Hannah going to get her way? Is Renton going to get his way? Meaning, be with Hannah? It's unclear. It's, it's unclear. I think you'd have to watch the movie again to find out. That's right. All right. See you guys next time.